Hey guys, this is Sam, and today we'll be counting down the top 5 accessibility features in iOS 8. Kicking it off at number 5, we've got the option to either enable or disable reachability. Now by default, this is enabled on all iPhone 6s as well as all iPhone 6 Pluses. And with reachability enabled, you can go ahead and double tap on the home button to make the display easier to reach with one hand. You guys can see the accessibility page, for example, has moved about halfway down the screen so that I can tap on the back button to general or just tap on something at the very top of the screen with ease. Now, I'm a fan of this feature, but if for whatever reason you don't want to use this and you see no point in it, go ahead and turn that toggle off. And from now on, reachability won't be enabled on your iPhone 6 or iPhone 6 Plus. At spot number four, we've got a small little interface tweak for switches. And this option is called on off labels. Now, if we go ahead and toggle that little button on, it'll actually change the way that every little switch or toggle looks on our device. So normally they look just plain white and when you turn them on, they're solid green. But with the on off labels option enabled, you can see that when they're turned off, there's a little circle on the right of them. And if you go ahead and switch one on while remaining green, they've also got a little line on the left side signifying that those switches are turned on. Now this is a very small change, but I think it's pretty cool that you have the option to make switches look a little bit different. Now moving on to spot number three, we've got assistive touch, and I'm sure many of you guys have already become quite acquainted with this feature, because assistive touch is that little box with a circle on it that when you tap it, you've got different gestures you can perform. You can go to notification center, control center, Activate Siri, click the home button, and manage some options about your device. Keep in mind that you're doing all of this with software. This is an especially, especially useful feature if you've got a broken lock or home button on your phone, because you can, or even volume for that matter, because if your lock button's broken, you can simply just tap on device and then tap on lock screen on the very next page. Hands down, assistive touch is by far one of the most useful accessibility features that iOS has to offer. And if you haven't messed around with it before, I would highly recommend that you go give it a try. Bringing us down to the top two accessibility features in iOS 8, we've got something called button shapes. And if we go ahead and toggle that on, you guys will probably notice immediately that the general button, or back button rather, looks different in the top left corner. But it's not just for back buttons there, because if we actually go over to, let's just go to TweetBot for example, you guys can see that at the bottom of the screen, every tab has a little blue highlight around it that definitely was not present before we enabled that option. Now, it's not going to work for all buttons, as you guys can see custom ones like the little tweet compose sheet won't actually show up as button shapes. Now, personally, I don't like the way this looks, and I think the button shapes look relatively ugly on my phone, but it's up to you if you like the way these look. If you want to change up the way most buttons look on your device, go ahead and flip on the switch for button shapes and you can make them look just like that. And finally, my number one accessibility feature for iOS 8 is reduce motion. Now this was actually introduced into iOS in the first place, I believe back on iOS 7.0.3, but the reason I chose this as number one even on iOS 8 is because I felt like it changed the most stuff that you used in daily use. The first thing you're gonna notice is that fade is the trend here. When you open or close an app, you get a fade motion just like that. Also, when you head over to the app switcher, it doesn't physically so physically show motion, but it just fades everything in and out just like that. It also reduces the parallax effect or completely turns it off on the home screen because many people were actually getting sick to their stomach after seeing the icons floating on top of this wallpaper and then the wallpaper moving in the background. So if you do notice that, if you get sick to your stomach or something because of that, you probably already have reduced motion on. But if you do want to change the animations of opening and closing apps, or even going to the app switcher, definitely go ahead and give it a try, and maybe some of you guys will actually like it better than the default options. So there you go guys, those are my top 5 accessibility features for iOS 8. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to hit that like button down below, and of course subscribe for more top 5s similar to this. This has been Sam with iUpdateOS, have a fantastic day guys, and I'll talk to you in the next one.